Great. All right. So jumping in, how are we doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Very excited to uh, check in today. I think we have a topic queued up that's probably one of our most asked about topics. Um, so yeah, kind of want to go into Google ads versus Facebook ads. You got a little bit of money to spend. I want to want to run some ads. Should I be running Google or Facebook ads? I feel like this is something that we hear all the time. Yes. From every type of business that I've ever interacted with, it's always been, should I go social media or should I go tried and true PPC? Definitely. <laughs> and I, I feel like we're going to have the gift that comes up and why not both? <laughs> so. Why not both? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Bury the lead up front, I guess. Why not yeah. both? <laughs> well, it's definitely though, we have arguments for both for reasons to use and not to use. Um, I have heard complaints across the board from every platform. So we just have to kind of put it up front that no platform is going to guarantee you results. No platform is going to like hit it out of the park immediately, unless you're some kind of magical unicorn. <laughs> I just don't see it happen, but there's a lot of testing involved and just a lot of things to consider. So I think even though we're bearing the lead up front, just know these platforms have lots of different uh, standards and reasons why you should and shouldn't use them. And so that's what we're going to touch on today. And I'm really excited to kind of dig in deeper. Definitely. I guess we're doing the opposite of burying the lead. We are, that, we are putting the lead right up front. We are putting it. What's the thing on top of the website when you're supposed uh, to put it in the TLDR <laughs> or when the top part of the website is, what's that called when you first oh. load it? The header? Yeah. Or the thing that you put the hero. I don't know. Uh, There's so yeah, many okay. different things. Yeah. Like you're Who's supposed to the put hero? the thing up at the top. <laughs> Maybe we'll make it, we'll make a new thing. Put it in the hero. This Start is embarrassing. It, it, no one's going to see this and think I know what websites do. <laughs> 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 All right. So should we start with Google or Facebook? Why don't you give us the basic, um, some of the, the basic differences and looking at this from the 30,000 foot view, um, you know, what's different about these two services? What, what makes a Google ad different than a Facebook ad? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think looking at it from sky high, something to think about is Facebook is what we would call interruption marketing. So when you go on Facebook, you're typically there to socialize. You're there to check in with your Mima and see what she's up to. You're not really <laughs> expecting to see any certain thing. Um, and that's where brands really take advantage of popping up in a newsfeed or popping up on a sidebar. However, it is that they decide to pop up in there. It interrupts what you're originally there for. So a lot like I would say on TV when you're there to watch your show and then they pop in the middle to <laughs> surprise you with an ad. Um, it's a bit like that. Whereas with Google, it's really intention based. So you are on Google to search for a question or to learn more about a topic or just to investigate something. And that's where you can pop up your ads to show you're related to what they're searching for. So it's very intention based, whereas a lot of social media advertising is interruption based. Definitely. And I'd add the caveat that Google is starting to break into, for instance, YouTube ads or uh, display ads that show up in you know, the sidebar. I shouldn't say they're breaking into that piece. They've been doing that for a long time. But um, in some ways, those give some similar uh, interruption based components. Um, but for the most part, I think it's a really good distinction to say that typically when we're talking about Facebook or Instagram ads, for that matter, uh, we're talking about interruption based versus intent based, where the, the user already knows what they're looking for. And you're showing your ad uh, to somebody who's you know pretty far down the funnel. Yeah. And I think something too to keep in mind as we're looking at sort of top level, um, I know that we've talked about how we could talk about this for days and days and days, but we, everyone should know that these platforms are constantly evolving and changing, especially with iOS and privacy um, related issues coming up. They're adapting to those. Um, Instagram is becoming more video focused, which they're getting a lot of heat for. So they, all these platforms are just like constantly evolving. So know that the success that people talk about years ago might not necessarily apply today. There's just so much change. So I always just like to throw that out there that they're not the same as they were even yesterday. You'll log into Facebook, <laughs> Meta. it's now Meta Business and 
everything has changed and you have no idea where stuff goes and they're not particularly helpful about it. So that's another thing that I thought I would throw out there is that this is probably one of the best arguments for business owners to hire people who do this every day instead of having to learn these platforms on their own and try it out on their own. It's because they're constantly evolving and it's just a big headache for people. So if you can outsource it, please do <laughs> save yourself the headache. <laughs> Give us the shameless plug here. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think you you bring up a good point when you bring up iOS 14 too. That's another big difference with the kind of interruption based versus intent based. Um, iOS 14, one of the biggest things that they did was prevent users uh, tracking users kind of across apps. So if I'm in Facebook as an app, I may not have as good visibility into what somebody did in some other app on their phone. Um, and that does affect Google to a, to a degree as well. Google gets a little less information than they used to get, but it primarily affects Facebook because Facebook is so app focused and because they're so focused on knowing the right person, knowing the qualities about the person and then targeting them based on that with an interruption based uh, ad, as opposed to where on Google, even if Google loses a little bit of information about you or doesn't have quite as good tracking of you, um, one, they're not solely in a single app so that, you know, that the app based interaction isn't um, as important. They also, they're more web browser focused. And then two, they always have that search still. So, um, you know, they still know that you were searching for one particular thing, which helps, you know, give that intent based information. Uh, it's not solely uh, targeting based on, you know, demographic and, and kind of interest based information about you as a person. Yeah, and I think you bring up a good point and maybe something that levels the playing field with Google a bit is that especially younger demographics are starting to use social media as more of a search tool than, than I'm, I mean, Google's still king, but they're starting to use like TikTok is becoming a big contender for Gen Z in terms of search. So even just being present on the apps is worth it in some ways, depending on your demographics. So you may be not don't have to necessarily invest a ton in advertising, but just making sure you have a presence and that people can search for you on there is still really important. But I still think Google is always going to be king, at least at this point. <laughs> I haven't seen much to really change it, but TikTok's coming for them and it's pretty interesting to see. Definitely. Yeah. And, and it's another good thing uh, to say about Google or one of the, the positives of Google as we kind of compare these services is Google just because based solely on the fact that they have a lot of breadth, that they are, you know, standard Google search, their uh, display ads showing up in different people's browsers or uh, uh, sidebars on different websites, their YouTube, they even use Discover, which I don't know anybody in the world who's ever used Discover, but Google really pitches these discovery ads um, where it shows up in a discover feed where, with your news and all of that. Um, they just have a little bit more breadth than something like a Facebook would have. Um, so take that for what it's worth, but it, it, you know, maybe they're a little bit more immune to some of the different changes or, or some of the different shifting sands of the marketing landscape. Yeah. I think you bring up a really good point. I kind of just to reiterate what I said before too, because they own YouTube, um, and YouTube is also such a big search engine in and of itself, having a presence on YouTube and being able to have videos show up for certain searches can be really beneficial, even if you're not running ads specifically through YouTube. But um, I've seen some really great success in some campaigns um, and just doing awareness campaigns around videos that they have that explain the brand and product. So it could be worth it just to investigate what is your demographic on and what are they searching through and how can you best show up in there? Definitely. All right, so we've got that Facebook is more interruption-based marketing, Google is more intent-based marketing, um, but is trying to get into the interruption-based marketing game. Uh, we've got that uh, iOS 14 is, is really hampering Facebook's ability to target and Google's ability to target for that matter, um, but probably has a little bit deeper impact on the uh, Facebook side of the house. Let's take another step back and say, okay, so what is Google ads really good for uh, versus Facebook ads uh, really good for? Where, where do these services kind of shine uh, knowing that information or those differences? I think I would start out with social media is really, really great for creative. So if you have user generated content, reviews on video, that's the way to go. If you can get someone to see your product and think, okay, that's interesting. And then have a person show up in their feed and say, look, I use this. This was so great. Here was the result. That is so powerful. And I know that, you know, you could potentially do the same on YouTube, but social media is just so good at that because while you're scrolling, looking at other people, 
you can just slip a product right on in there. And <laughs> it really is really effective for people. So I think when it comes to, if your strength is, um, your product is really good looking, <laughs> really engaging visually, um, social media is probably where you're going to want to go with that. Um, the, the, just the differences in um, accessibility for creative is just pretty stark. And I know Google's trying to compete with that. So, you know, maybe months down the road, if we ask the same question, we might have something different to say, but right now I would say social media is still the best when it comes to visuals and interesting, creative and trying new stuff. Definitely. And I think that hits on the point too, that a lot of what those visuals are doing is showing a new product or showing something that somebody didn't know they wanted before um, and really kind of introducing and educating the consumer about your product um, that maybe wasn't on their radar. So I think it does a great job of building that awareness right off the bat, um, kind of prospecting for new users who probably haven't heard of your, your product before, but just getting in front of them with the visuals, with video, with um, images. Um, and as you mentioned, obviously, uh, Google's doing more and more of that, but that definitely is where Facebook reigns supreme right now with introducing new products, introducing new product features too. You kind of, with that visual representation or video representation, you have just more breadth of space to tell your story and to give a little bit of, uh, a little bit more education around, you know, the, the benefits of your product as opposed to just what you get in, in a search headline. Yeah, definitely. And I think for Google, something interesting, and I'd be curious on your thoughts as well, when it comes to competitors and getting out in front of competitors, I feel like Google is really good for that. And at least gives you a more, um, more transparency around what other people are doing, as opposed to on social media, you're not really going to be able to see what your competitors are doing unless they're targeting you based on your interests and you get to see it or you hear other people reporting to you. Whereas with Google, you can see kind of on the back end based on your costs and just some other tests that you can be doing, you can get a little insight into what your competitors do are doing and if they're targeting for your keywords and things like that. So I always found that to be really an interesting aspect of PPC. If you can hear Percy uh, scrambling around in the background here. I don't know if she has some uh, thoughts. <laughs> picked up on the mic. <laughs> oh, that face says it all. <laughs> Caught red handed. She. Move your way down, turn away. <laughs> that face said it all. <laughs> all right. That was great. <laughs> Back to it. I, I lost my place here. She uh, she distracted me. Um, no problem. I was talking about um, competitors and how I feel like Google gives you a really interesting insight into what your competitors are doing that you might not necessarily see when you're advertising on social. Definitely. And that's a, a great point too. There, you have some competitor targeting abilities on um, Facebook, but I think that's somewhere where Google really shines with either when somebody's searching for a competitor, getting in front of them and, and trying to, you know, get them to choose your product instead of the competitor's product, or on the opposite side of that kind of defending, if you know that your competitor is searching for uh, or your competitor is trying to put ads in front of people who are searching for your product, Google does a great job of, you know, that brand uh, brand ads or defending, um, you know, people searching for your brand keywords and making sure that your ad is right up at the top there. Yeah, definitely. So I think we've talked a little bit about Facebook being super great for creative and Google being a bit more for insights into competitors. Where do you stand in between like either either platform for a new e-commerce business owner? How should they start thinking about which platform they should go to? Definitely. So it's different for every business. And I think, um, you know, as you kind of mentioned up front, the best thing you can do is test and try something out with, with both. Um, ultimately, you're going to want to get to a place where you're running both ads on Facebook and Google. Um, and I'm using Facebook and Instagram kind of interchangeably because we, we those ads perform similarly, a different demographic, but um, kind of have a similar ad style and we manage them uh, out of the same uh, interface. So um, a lot of the similar um, benefits and, and use cases. Um, but yeah, I would say ultimately, we typically start with Google um, because it's so intent-based. So if you have a product that is really 
easily described or your, your customers know how to describe it when they're looking for that product. It's nice because you know you're getting in front of customers who already are on the train looking to buy something that's you know similar to or, or looking to buy your type of product. Um, and then also to, to have that brand uh, brand ad defense just to make sure that you don't have competitors um, you know getting out in front of people who are already looking to buy your product. Um, that being said, if you have the type of product that needs a little bit more story behind it, that needs you know a little bit more education, that's where Facebook or Instagram may um, work pretty well because you have that opportunity to say, hey, you may not have even you know known how to search for this type of item, um, but this is why this is really cool. Or if it's the type of item that somebody you know knows they need, but yours is made in a more sustainable fashion or something like that, that might be a great way where you're not competing just in the mass of people searching for your product as a commodity. You're competing now on a differentiator that you can talk about and say, hey, this is really what makes my product special as opposed to you know anything else, anything that any of my competitors are doing or maybe different than anything that's out there in the market you know, in general. There's just nothing like this. Um, so that's where you may want to start with something like a Facebook or Instagram. Um, but in the long run, it, it really, we see the best performance when we put these two side by side. So let's, you know, look at something like Google or, or great strategy is to start with Google when somebody's searching for a particular product, go ahead and get in front of them with Google ads. And then by the time they've hit your site, now we've collected that information. We know that they've hit your site. And then let's remarket with Facebook or Instagram and get in front of them and stay top of mind, you know, uh, numerous times, numerous touch points over the next couple of weeks and make sure that we ultimately get that purchase. Whereas if you're not running that remarketing, you're not getting back in front of them in front of their, you know, Facebook, Instagram feeds. Um, you may be in a situation where they did come to your site, they paid, you know, you paid for the click on Google, um, but then they ultimately went away. Maybe they even got distracted. You know, they weren't purposely not purchasing your, your product. They just, you know, happened, something else came up that day um, and they may never make it back. So I think that's a really good um, strategy, especially early on to, um, you know, start with Google as far as getting in front of people and then use Facebook to really remarket and make sure that you're closing the sale after somebody's been, you know, been on your site in the first place. Yeah, those are all really good points. I think something else to consider too is the way that you tell your story to your target demographic, whereas, um, or kind of why not do both <laughs> strategy works really well when you're thinking about doing blog posts and SEO focused um, content writing on your website, but also considering doing video for like user generated content and social. So I recently had seen some really good arguments from someone on TikTok, <laughs> admittedly, about how some people don't want to read. They would rather watch a one minute video that describes your story, describes your product, instead of going to a long form blog post or reading copy on your website. So I always think the more um, ways that you can reach your audience, the more accessible you can be to different types of people. So, you know, I, I like to read, but my ability to read has gone down quite a bit since I've been involved in social media, to be fair. So I'm someone who also really enjoys, you know, learning about products and one minute videos, but um, I still do like digging into long form blog content. So why not capture as many types of people as you can in your target demographic by just making your content accessible? And I think a part of the argument to do that when you're a small business is that you can repurpose content. So you can make the video, then you can um, transcribe it and put it in a blog post um, and, and just have them kind of speak to each other that way. Have it all connected and working for you instead of only focusing on one and leaving people who would access it in a different way kind of out in the cold. Definitely. And I think that that argument kind of stands both for the type of content you're producing and also the channels where you're presenting that. So just making sure that you're touching people as often as possible in as many places as possible. I didn't didn't come across right there. But uh, but yeah, from a marketing perspective, making sure that you have as many touch points um, getting out there, you know, whether it be Facebook and Instagram and then YouTube and then when they actually search, get in the browser and then, you know, a display ad in a, in a sidebar. I think all of those things together, um, you know, really help you to reach the user. We call that omni-channel marketing. So reaching the user across as many channels as possible um, to ultimately, uh, you know, 
introduce yourself, build a relationship and ultimately close the sale. Yeah. And I was just going to say that that really reminds me of a Google article where they talk about the buying process, not being as linear as a lot of people thought or, um, and just like a straightforward funnel. So I think I'll link that in the show notes so people can see what Google's recommended as the typical buying process looks more like a tornado to me and like a, <laughs> like a circle illustrating it. And just the way people think about purchasing things is not as straightforward as we used to think. So being able to be in multiple places, and like you said, popping up as many times as possible is more important now than ever. Definitely. Awesome. Well, I think we gave a, a good introduction to this topic. Uh, there's probably 10 other things we could dive into, but we'll have to uh, come back to this. Um, for now, let's uh, jump over to what's good. Um, do you uh, have what's good today? I do. And you know what? I'm going to do a little reverse psychology on myself here. I was going to have my what's good be that I had my birthday this week, which is like kind of boring, kind of basic. But instead, I'm going to use it to try to trick myself and maybe put some good vibes out to the universe for black bears to stop taking over my house. So I'm going to say that it's good that we have had so many black bear visitors that maybe they'll stop coming to our house. <laughs> and I'll put some clips up so people know that I'm not kidding around and that we don't have baby bears rolling around, that there are some big black bears that just keep showing up in our yard to hang out and eat. And we even had one show up yesterday for my birthday. We had to scare him off because he'd come before and we were like, you know what? We're not trying to be friends with you. You need to leave. <laughs> I need to be able to take my dog out to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Just imagining a bear sitting there in the party hat. I feel like I've yeah. seen that uh, seen that gif somewhere. I'm going to put one up for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I said, you were not invited to this party. Please leave. <laughs> not happening. Well, he heard that you're not much of a birthday person and that you needed to celebrate and really, really pick it up a little bit. So maybe that's the uh, the thing here. Yeah, adding definitely. A little bit of extra, extra spice to the birthday. <laughs> yeah. Spice I did not ask for. So that's my, re my reverse psychology for what's good this week is I'm going to put it out there that, hey, I'm glad that they're resurging. I know that we live in their, you know, their original home and they're just trying to figure out how to survive amongst all of our dumpsters and driving cars and people. But I would really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate their existence, but also I would really like them to, to leave my yard so that my dog can go out in the bathroom and we don't have to worry about them popping up. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. What about you? Um, so this week, I've got something that I'm really excited about, and I guess is kind of work related. I think uh, maybe some of our listeners in the kind of craft brand space uh, will will have some takeaways here. But I went online this similar as we've talked about uh, a TikTok 10 times today. I got this uh, by a TikTok ad. I was heavily marketed to and clearly it worked because I saw this everywhere. And finally, I just had to buy it. Um, it's the fly by Jing pepper sauce, but first of all, the ads are really cool. Like they're, you know, really in-depth, uh, short videos of the product. And, um, I'm a pepper guy in general. I like hot sauce, that type of thing. So I was like, Oh, I got to try it. Let's, let's give it a shot finally. So I get it and it's shipped to the house and this was packaged so beautifully, just the perfect little box that was purpose made for this particular container. It wasn't just like shoved in with a bunch of uh, packing peanut type things. It was, you know, had like holes to hold it very perfectly. I always think back to the uh, Apple iPhone unboxing things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It definitely had that feel. And it came with this nice little guidebook that told a little bit of the founder's story and had a bunch of recipes and talked about the different ingredients in it and how they're sourced. And I thought that was just so cool that with every individual order, they're sending this little book that has you know, really introduces the brand. It makes me want to be a customer forever. So um, yeah, I finally broke down, bought it out of the uh, TikTok ad, and I probably will be a customer forever just because it's such a cool presentation. And the product is really good too. Very tasty uh, hot sauce, if that's uh, what you're into. I was just going to ask, how how is it? <laughs> what have you tried I haven't had like the perfect dish for it yet. So all week I've been like, putting it on different things, which probably aren't its sweet spot. Um, but it's been very good as I've tried it on all these things. I think definitely like a chicken sandwich, I feel like it's going to be the Ooh. thing in the next couple of days. I'll, uh, I'll buy some chicken and make something for that. All right. I'm getting closer to purchase now. <laughs> see, becoming a brand evangelist. Over yeah. Here. See how it works. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been great. Um, glad we got a chance to jump into Facebook and Google today. 
Um, Lindsay, have a great week. Oh, thanks. You too. <laughs> All right. Talk soon. Bye.